Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we are learning about the new strain of COVID-19 and the second wave. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 Okay, Tammy, before we continue the conversation, let's just quickly bring in some of the comments our audience has because there are lots of messages coming in. Um, so let me take yours, Tammy. Oh, all right. So, yes, the first question here is about the symptoms of COVID. So, this would like to know how you know whether you actually have COVID. Oh, we lost your audio. Tell me. Did she disappear? Oh, <laughs> okay. While well, they are trying to connect her, I think um, I would like to ask the doctor. Huh? Hi, the new strain is so deadly and the numbers have gone up in Nigeria, even without much testing going in the country. Do you have an idea if the current strain is as contagious as it has different symptoms we need to look out for? Okay, I think um, that's one. Let me take another one. Um, good evening, ladies. Who are they... hear my question? Okay, can you come back again? Sorry, we lost your audio. So sorry about that. So yeah, the first question is about the symptoms of COVID, especially the second um, wave of COVID. How, how do you know what are the symptoms to look out for? There are different symptoms and if you suspect that you may, you know, be, you may be, uh, you may have COVID, how do you go about it? What do you do? What's the next step? So the first question is about symptoms and then what do you do? That's what this person would like to know. Okay. Okay. So do you want me to go through all of the questions? No, go ahead. No, wait. No. Let him just That's respond to this first. Here. Let him respond okay. to this first. So uh, the good news is that on term, in terms of the uh, new strain of COVID, the symptoms seem to be pretty much the same. So just to reiterate for our audience, uh, the symptoms will be cough, fever, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell. Uh, some people have what we call gastrointestinal, sim gastrointestinal symptoms, diarrhea and vomiting. And sometimes some people just have weakness. They just feel weak, maybe a little bit feverish, like they have malaria. I've seen quite a number of patients who've just come to see me and said, I just don't feel well. I don't, I'm not my normal self. And these days we know very low th uh, threshold for testing for COVID and they test positive. In terms of, of what they should do, I think the um, advice that we're giving everybody seems to be the same now, which is um, as much as possible, we try and encourage everyone to stay home because very few people need to be in hospital. And with this second wave, one of the unfortunate things that have, has happened is that obviously in the first wave, you have all these treatment centers and isolation centers were open, but they've all been closed. Yeah, they shut they're, down. They're all shut down. And then as far as I know, I'm not sure there are any plans to reopen any of them. Mm -hmm. And so now the, in terms of capacity for places that can look after bed people spaces. who have, there are no bed spaces. There's nowhere for people to go. So myself and quite a number of my colleagues are currently fielding a whole bunch of phone calls from very worried patients who are symptomatic at home and want to go to hospital and we have nowhere to send them because yeah. they are just, all the, all the bed spaces are completely full. Wow. And the few places that exist are almost overrun and overwhelmed with cases. Mm -hmm. But the truth is the vast majority of people, just like we spoke about in April when I first came on, can stay at home and will do well at home. Mm -hmm. Almost without doing anything, their immune system will just Quite deal with this yeah. uh, for themselves. There are some things that the, the number one thing we want people to be very cautious about is just monitoring their oxygen levels. Mm. If your oxygen levels drop, um, usually we say below 95 or below 90, then you need to be thinking about being in a hospital. So how do you do that? Is there an equipment you Correct. need to buy? And so, how cheap is it? How affordable is it? I don't know the cost, but they're not so expensive. Okay. Probably a couple of thousand naira or mm. something like that. You buy a pulse oximeter. A lot of the pharmacies are doing a very brisk business in selling pulse oximeters now. I'm sure, mm. I'm sure the price has probably gone up because there's such a demand for them. Nevertheless, they're not so expensive. Um, and you just put it on your finger and it will tell you your heart rate and your oxygen levels. In fact, one of my patients called me the other night and said that she was mon she had tested COVID, she'd been fine, she was at home, and then suddenly she called me and said, I tested myself and I'm seeing 70. And I was like, well, if your oxygen levels, levels are 70, you need to be in hospital. And she yeah. had to get uh, she had to get to, yeah, get to hospital so she could get oxygen. But those are, in terms of the numbers of patients that we're looking at, there will always be a, majority, a minority. Probably about 5% of all cases may need to go to hospital. hospital. But those, that's the main thing to look for is oxygen. Now, in terms of treatment, um, the, one of the things that has changed since April, when we first had this issue, was the emergence of dexamethasone. 
as a good treatment for people who have severe COVID. The study that um, talked about dexamethasone um, suggested that patients who are really sick in hospital who needed oxygen were the ones who benefited most from dexamethasone. So people who are just at home, maybe a bit of a fever, some aches and pains, maybe loss of taste and smell, but oxygen levels are fine, really there is no evidence to support the fact that these people need dexamethasone. Yeah. It's only those people usually So don't go hospital. and get the drug so, and thinking. Right, so I don't want people to go and rush out and just because they have the slightest mm. uh, symptom, go rush out and go and de get dexamethasone. Now, because again, as I mentioned at the start, we're learning about this virus, there are lots of other things that are out there that people are talking about. So if you remember, at the beginning of this, we were all talking about hydroxychloroquine, and then eventually that kind of went away because mm -hmm. they did a lot of studies and just did not show that there was any benefit to it. Right. So thankfully that's gone. But there are still some other things around that people are talking about. Obviously people say take vitamin D, say do steam inhalation, take zinc, take multivitamins. Those are fine. There's no direct so evidence. So that's the question that Amy was asking about immune system. system. Yeah. So about boosting your immune system. So there's no real strong evidence that they help. But the good thing about these things is there's very little harm that comes from taking them. Yeah. So, I mean, I have seen a number of patients who are taking so much vitamin C and lemon water. Because these things are acidic, they got them, gave themselves gastritis as yeah. a result and ulcers, as we call oh, it. My and they just ask them to stop and then they get better. So that's fine. Um, some people are talking about ivermectin as another treatment. Again, I'm not sure what the ev whether the evidence base is quite there to support it. Uh, in America, they were talking about remdesivir, which I know mm -hmm. the president, uh, Donald the Trump, Trump took, used, yeah. used, and people were talking about convalescent, and convalescent plasma is also out there. All these poten But these are usually treatments that will be reserved for well, people who are really cases, sick, yeah. who are in hospital. They're yeah. not really for just your mild case mild at cases. home, um, just um, getting over it. So let me just reassure the audience that the vast majority of people will get, who may get this illness will have a mild case Symptom. of the illness. So all they just need to do and is get to better. isolate. Isolate. Okay. That's the most important All right. Thing. So Rick, um, that's Ade from the UK. He's joined in. He says, good evening, ladies. Honestly, this COVID is real. I lost a family friend on the 1st of January. We're so sorry about that, Ade. Um, 1st of January, 2021, who is a medical doctor. He, this man gives advice on COVID and other medical issues, but became a victim. We all need to be careful and be enlightened of the reality. Thank you so much, um, Ade. Well said. He's, um, he's joined, always joining in from the UK. Then I would like to ask the doctor of this vaccine, will, will, be, uh, will be a must in the near, will the vaccine be a must in the near future? Can somebody follow protocols without needing to have to take the vaccine? That's from Ro Rola Care. And Kelvin says, I don't think we follow protocols sufficiently in Nigeria. So many private parties taking place. I was going to ask a question that what should we do with these very adamant uh, citizens that we have in Nigeria that love party, you know, and all of that. But let's take the question on the vaccine before you come to the party. Then sure. maybe we take a second question. So the, 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 the I think it's Rolake who asked the question about the vaccine. I think yeah. it's a very, very good question. So uh, some people have even talked about, you know, vaccine certificates or vaccine visas mm. whereby you will not be allowed on a plane or going to certain places if you haven't taken the vaccine. Um, that is always problematic because we never want to be in a situation where people are forced to take something. They may have whatever, con no matter how we may feel about their decision, they have a right over their own bodies, um, whether to take a vaccine or not. And also um, whether, um, but do not, do not necessarily want to be excluded from society as a result. And it's a difficult balance to strike. And I think the way that we've handled this in the past and we've dealt with it with lots of things. I, I grew up in the UK. Uh, we had a lot of controversy about the MMR vaccine, for example. And rather than make it mandatory or anything like that, we solved the problem just with ongoing more and more education awareness, yeah. and awareness. And I think the same thing will happen with this vaccine. I think for us, whether fortuitously or non-fortuitously, I, I think I saw a report today saying that maybe by the beginning of February or the end of February that we'll start to get the vaccine in Nigeria. Mm. By that stage, maybe 10 million people in the UK would have been vaccinated. 20 million people in the U.S. would have been vaccinated. There'll be a lot more information than we have now as to what the side effects are, what to look out for, who should get it and who shouldn't. And then people will have more information to make an informed decision as to whether they think this is something that they should do or not. not but I don't think it will be uh, necessary to make it so mandatory. So for this, our very stubborn Nigerians that like Faji. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that How do even we deal with them? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't think even coronavirus can stop people from going to <laughs> Owa and Bear parties. It just people have to party. Hey. And it's it, on, on a larger point, I think the coronavirus, um, like some other conditions, really brings into sharp relief a number of issues where human beings have a a human tendency to congregate, to want to be with each other, mm. and that's not going to go away. And when something comes along that tells people to go against their natural instincts, it is very difficult to it enforce it. It's a very it. strong resistance. And it's very difficult to enforce it for a long period of time. If you say it's only for a month and then it will go away, mm -hmm. people can take that. But now, we've been doing We're this since sure. April. Yes. We don't, nobody knows when this is going to end. And it looks as if this problem is here to stay. So people are going to be like, listen, you know, and you can, and you can, you can understand it, you know, you have a mother whose child is turning 10 or 18, landmark birthdays, <laughs> now they're going to miss it, be, not have the, the normal uh, experience or that all the other friends, or your 40th, <laughs> or your 50th, your, your mom's 70th, or something like that. It's yeah. very hard, but we would still need to, I think, just educate people, Absolutely. make them aware that, look, you know, it is still worth it to avoid it, because certainly in Lagos, the biggest problem was a lot of partying, mm. a lot of events. And I think I read also yesterday that um, Lagos State raided quite a number of places yes. um, and uh, fined people for having you know, illegal parties, parties yeah. especially after midnight and mm. before uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. So maybe that will also help to convince people to stop. Angela says, my challenge is China, uh, China where all this seem to have started is doing better than most um, Western countries. That's from Angela. Yinka says, I believe there is COVID. I believe we might need vaccines, but can we have an open market supply? We have Pfizer as leading the front. Maybe when we can choose, then it may be um, better and encourage transparency. Do you agree with um, Yinka? I absolutely do. Mm. So um, I think the um, purchase and distribution of the vaccines it's most likely going to be government-led because it's the government that is going to purchase these vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know which of the versions of the vaccine the government is going to go for, whether the Oxford or the Pfizer. I hear that they are Pfizer. going to China now. I saw it in the papers yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like, so we don't know which one they're going to go for. Um, but I think um, there should be some choice in mm -hmm. the matter in terms of um, let all the different versions be available and have so people you have choose, to choose yeah. which version people feel yeah. more comfortable with. Com with. Com some people may feel more comfortable with certain versions than others for whatever reason. Yeah. And I think having the choice, uh, provided that all these vaccines have been through the right checks and the right stringencies have been applied, um, the aim is that people should get vaccinated if the vaccine is going to help to reverse this and people can go back to partying as much as they want at <laughs> yes, some point. So. <laughs> Femi, um, so what's your second question quickly? Because we, ra we ran out of time. Oh, is Femi there? Femi, can you hear me? Okay, I think we lost her again. So local remedies, right? Mm. I know you doctors don't like to hear local remedies. But I believe that Nigeria is so blessed. I think one of the reasons that we are having this low numbers or maybe low mortality rate is because of our local food, like the local vegetables, everything, ginger, garlic. You know, we're very big on spices and all mm. of that, right? So what do you think, how, what role do you think local remedies will play in Nigeria? Because I saw one tweet, Yabin us that instead of us to focus and, you know, and embrace what we have locally, we are waiting and now they are bringing it and forcing, forcing um, a vaccine down our throat. Don't you think that, you know, we should go back and restudy why we are having this, instead of just making vague assumptions, let us know why the numbers are truly low in Nigeria and the death rate is actually low. So what do you think the local things play in this um, um, so the, report? The truth is the local, um, are, you know, as, as I alluded to earlier, I think you know, some, some people, unfortunately, not all coming from us, have done studies to show that um, you know, we have more cross-reactivity, which may contribute to our lower, um, our lower infection rates mm -hmm. and lower death rates, etc. We don't know what role, if any, uh, local diet plays in terms of what we're doing. It may play a role. It may not. We don't know. It will be interesting. I'm sure somebody out there is probably doing a study as we speak. Yeah. But as, as scientists and medical people, it's not that we don't we have anything against traditional uh, remedies. Mm. It's just that we want evidence that it works. So mm. if someone came up with a traditional remedy and did what we call a randomized control trial against it, either a gold standard or a placebo and showed that it was effective, 
why would we why would we be against it? We'd be all for it. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want is evidence, and a lot of the times, in terms of our local remedies, the evidence can be lacking, and mm -hmm. so it makes it difficult for us to recommend it. Okay, so finally, this new strain, doctor, is it that it mutated or what? <laughs> because how does it even happen well, in like two minutes or one minute? Yeah, so that's exactly what happened. It mutated. And that's what viruses <laughs> but that's just do. 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so the virus did mutate. And viruses mutate all the time. It's nothing new or strange about mm -hmm. coronaviruses. The flu virus changes every year. When in countries where they have a lot of flu, it happens all the time. With HIV, it literally changes uh, from one generation to the next, which is why you don't treat with one drug, but treat with multiple drugs to mm -hmm. prevent resistance um, so yeah. from, from occurring. So... The fact that the virus has mutated is not, is not a huge surprise. Mm. Um, the good news is the mutation has not affected um, the treatments that we've developed so far. So let us just hope that no matter how it mutates, it continues to be susceptible. And that once we have Im immu uh, some built-in immunity from the vaccines, hopefully it will be um, effective against all forms of it. All right. Uh, th Tammy, I hear you're back. <laughs> This uh, is your Oyo Ibadan. Do and come back to Lagos. <laughs> your Oyo <or> network. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I believe you've taken the questions, right? Yeah, we've taken all the questions. But here. Yeah. But in Oyo state, do they observe wearing of nose mask and all of those things? No. no. Oh, Honestly, no. <laughs> you wear your nose mask that people are looking at you. Strange. If you are... I mean, some people do, but a large the number large majority. of people don't. Yeah. So I, doctor, we even wear more masks than this. Absolutely. Doctor, look into the camera and just tell somebody out there that COVID is real. <laughs> COVID is very real. I mean, there's, there's jokes running on social media that anybody that doesn't believe it's real should go to a COVID ward without a mask on and see what happens. But COVID is very real in all seriousness. This is not a hoax. People need to take it seriously. Um, you know, even if it doesn't affect you, it may affect a loved one. I think um, all of us just taking the minor inconvenience of wearing a face mask, practicing some social distancing, uh, making sure we do good hand hygiene, you, know, you may be saving a life without knowing it. So I think I would implore everyone to please, please, please bear with the inconveniences a little while longer. Thank you so much. I think that's the best way to wrap it up. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to impact. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment. Now, if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating some internship slots. We're not asking for jobs. <laughs> if you are a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us all on our social media handle. It's going to be an all-year round engagement where we help people, you know, find internship spaces. Hopefully, if you do well, I'm sure the company will want to retain you. So tell a friend to tell a friend to keep all eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. That's from Marie Curie. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>